Hi, this is DJ James from musicmoose.org, and uh, today's lesson, what I want to deal with is the concept of approach tones. Um, if you took a look at my funk lessons already, we did a little bit of approach tones in, uh, in some of the rhythm playing there. But in this time, what I want to do is talk about approach tones when it comes to improvising and when it comes to soloing. First of all, just to kind of quickly give you an idea of what an approach tone is, an approach tone is something that, exactly like the, the word says, approaches another note. Generally, it's a note that you're going to use in passing. Um, in classical music, they would have called these neighbor tones or appoggiaturas, things like that. Um, in jazz and in pop music, we just call them approach tones, the whole bit. Um, the way that approach tones work, again, are targeting another tone within a chord. So a lot of times, approach tones will happen within arpeggios. Uh, what I mean by that is if we look at a standard arpeggio, so we'll play an E minor 7 arpeggio here. What we can do is, since we have four notes in that arpeggio, if we want to expand that arpeggio, especially in terms of a solo, kind of create something a little bit bigger, we can do it by using a whole mess of approach tones. We'll start out by using a quick little uh, diatonic approach to the fifth of that chord. And um, what I mean by using a diat diatonic approach is I mean uh, an approach tone that is a member of the scale from which that chord comes. So we're going to use something that is an E minor by using a diatonic approach. And what I'm going to use now is an upper neighbor tone, an upper neighbor approach to the fifth, which would be a C natural. Simple enough. All I mean by approach tones is instead of playing that straight arpeggio, we now have... See? Easy enough. Now, one thing that we can do, there are generally two types of approach tones, and one thing we can do with those approach tones is start to pair them up. Our two types of approach tones are the diatonic approach, that little going from the C to the B, and we also have chromatic approach tones, which would be something that isn't part of the scale, isn't part, in this instance, isn't part of an E minor scale. So let's play this up here, uh, just to give you an example. We'll play that, we'll just move that from, uh, we were playing it before in fourth position, now we'll move it to sixth position. There's our E minor 7 arpeggio. Now if we're going to use a chromatic approach, what I want to do now is use a chromatic approach uh, lower neighbor to that B, to the fifth. And I'm going to play an A sharp. So here is exactly what that would be like. Okay. So that's our approach. Now what we can do then is pair the approach tones to the note. And a lot of, you'll hear this a lot, especially in kind of like uh, Charlie Christian early jazz guitar, this double approach tone method. And what it essentially sounds like is something like... And we, you'll hear it more often than not on the third of a dominant chord. So for instance, that would be an A7. Exactly what I'm playing there is an A and then a D. The D as the next note really doesn't have any sort of function except as to target the C sharp. And the following C natural has no function except to target the C sharp as well. The actual riff there is, that's the lick I'm trying to play, just that arpeggio. But by using approach tones, I elaborate that second tone and emphasize it. Uh, hopefully you're starting to get the idea with that. Now we can even expand the chords even farther by using approach tones on every one of the notes in the chord. Of course, that kind of gets pretty big and you'll start sounding like Wayne Shorter. But you can use it on really any one of the tones in the chord. So let's try something like, uh, this time what I want to do is play that riff, but now I'm going to use a chromatic approach to the E as well. And this is where you start getting a little bit more of a hip sound. You start hearing these chromatic approaches to things. And we could even do it now. Uh, let's do one on the root as well. Or if we put the chromatic approach then on the fifth as well. And you can hear how this starts to become something completely different. And this is exactly what the concept of the approach tone is. Now, Another thing we can do with the approach tone is pair them in different ways. So instead of pairing them so that they target a single note, use two different approaches to target different notes within the arpeggio. You hear this a lot in soul, 
uh, in funk, uh, Motown. This was a huge uh, little trope that they would use all the time. And essentially what I'm going to do right now is play an arpeggio of an E7 uh, chord. And I'm just going to play the arpeggio of the root, the third, and the seventh, so the root and the guide tones. The tones I'm targeting here are... But what you can do is, first of all, create a chromatic approach to that third. And then create an upper diatonic approach to the seventh. So what we end up with is... And this, again, kind of, like I said, very big in Motown, but also can be used as sort of a fill, something that just kind of sits in between. If we're playing, um, let's say we'll play a little bit of a blues in C and try to get a sound of how we can use these approach tones. that was just full of approach tones and again littered a little bit too much with them but I was doing it demonstratively even if it didn't make a lot of musical sense the reason that I was doing it was to show you that that first that those paired approach tones so in that sense the real arpeggio is but with the chromatic approach to the E and then the diatonic approach to the B flat we get and we have the same thing on the F do the same thing there and then what I played on the G was something along these lines which was starting out with the F and then playing the B with a lower chromatic approach from the B flat and then down to the F and this is essentially what we have with approach tones now this is just you know your very very quick uh, short crash course crash course into approach tones you can expand the concept, and as you get into using upper harmonic structures, what will really kind of throw things and make, uh, make things sound really hip and, and just way out there is by using uh, chromatic approaches to altered notes, especially to the upper structure. Uh, if you're soloing along and all of a sudden you have a double chromatic approach to a flat 13, that's when things start to get really hip. Um, and that's essentially where we're going to end up with these lessons, but for right now, that's a quick start into how you can conceive of chromatic approaches and diatonic approaches, how you can use approach tones really to enrich your playing and to enrich your soloing. For musicmoose.org, I'm DJ James.